everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is MTG Ghoul Dude, and today we're going to be continuing our Digging Up the Past to a Different Tribe playlist with Avatars Part 3. Yep, we're not done yet. We're right, we're at the end now, though. So, we're going to pick it back up with Niv Mizzet Reborn in War of the Spark. For Wooburg, you get a 6 6 flying dragon avatar. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library for each color pair and choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards in your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This would be one that I would not choose to helm a avatar based deck because, yeah, there is a lot of multicolored avatars, but there is, let's just say there's a lot of monocolored avatars you could spring into. But I mean, if you're willing to go into the multitude of multicolor hybrid avatars to fit into Nim Visit, that would actually be pretty good too. But me personally, I wouldn't stick too hard to it. Oh, it's my boy Hogak. Hogak Arisen Necropolis for five, a black and two hybrid green black. It's an eight eight and you can't spend mana to cast the spell. You can convoke and you can only convoke and delve to get it onto the battlefield and you may cast it from your graveyard and it has trample which is actually super niche but I like it a lot my favorite artist is Vincent Prosh and he did Hogak and I just I love this art body of knowledge for three and two blue it is a star star and it's power toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand and you have no maximum hand size and whenever it is dealt damage you may draw that many cards so if you already have a huge hand and you can just block for days, this is just going to be more card draw. You'll probably draw yourself out with this one. Soul of Eternity for 5 and 2 white. It's a star star equal to your power toughness or equal to your life total. And it has Encore for 7 and 2 white. So if you can find a way to get this uh, lifelink, it could get huge very quickly. Especially if you if all of your creatures have lifelink, like a uh, a Tesa, that would be really good. I could see this going in a Tesa deck and just being nasty. Wandering Archaic from Strixhaven for 5 mana, you get a 4-4. Four, four. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, instant or sorcery spell, you may pay 2. If you do, if they don't, you may copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. And then the backside of it is Explore the Vast Lands for 3 mana. Each player looks at the top 5 cards of their library, reveal a land and or instant or sorcery card from among them, then puts the cards they revealed this way into their hand and the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. Each player gains 3, which is not bad. And I will say, this actually, if you look at the, the last card on the front side of it, it said, Fly the Path of Nine Birds. That means something because if you look at the back and you count how many birds are there, you got one at the top, like five in the middle, and then three on the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine birds. Yeah, I think that's right. All seeing arbiter. This is just. Maybe this is probably the creepiest one to me because it just looks like a dude standing in the middle watching everybody. Yeah, I don't like the art on this one. But for four mana, you can four and two blue, you can get a five four with flying. Doesn't even look like it's fly, it's just standing there. Anyways, I have a big thing about contradicting art to abilities. Like you see a bird. Most birds fly. But some birds don't have flying in magic. I think it's just insane. <clears throat> but whenever it enters the battlefield attacks, enter the battlefield or attacks, you draw two cards, then discard a card. So it's like card advantage, kind of, sort of. But whenever you discard a card, target creature and opponent controls get to minus X, minus O until your next turn, where X is the number of different mana values among cards in your graveyard. So if you have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they get minus 5, minus O until the turn. Shadow of Morality... I actually like this one a lot. It is it is creepy because it's a dude. It's a shadow in the shadows of buildings. Actually, it's in the sunlight of buildings. But 
for 13 and 2 black, you get a 7 7. If your life total is less than your starting life total, this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the difference. So if you've lost 13 life, this is just a 7 7 for 2 in Commander. It's actually pretty good. It's not a good cost, but you know, it's not bad either. Soul of Emancipation for 4, a green, a white, and a blue. It's a 5 7. Whenever it enters the battlefield, destroy up to. Three other target non-land permanents. It's, uh, what is it called? The, the, ah, oh, it's leaving my mind now. If you, if you know what I'm talking about, the, the one that targets non-creature permanents, that's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, I can't think of it. But for each of those permanents, this controller gets a three, th excuse me, three, three white angel creature token with flying. Oh, that's going to be bothering me for the rest of the day now. Why can't I remember that? Prime Evil Spawn for 5 and Wilbur gets a 10 10. If it would enter the battlefield and wasn't cast or no mana was spent to cast it, exile it instead. So you have to cast it. It can't be free casted. Well, it can be free casted, but it can't be. Yeah, no, it can't be free casted. So you could use like a Jota ability to put it on the battlefield. But it has Vigilance, Trample, and Life Link. Whenever it leaves the battlefield, exile the top 10 cards of your library. You may cast any number of spells with total mana value 10 or less from among them without paying their mana cost. And then we get into the dom some more of the Dominaria United Commander deck cards. of The Lady of Otaria for 3 a red and a green. It's a 5-5. Five, five. You may tap 3 untapped dwarves you control rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Beginning of each end step, if a land you control was put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put any number of dwarf cards from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Soul of Wind Grace. For one, a black, a red, and a green. It is a 5 4. Whenever Soul of Wind Grace enters the battlefield or attacks, you may put a land card from your graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under your control. And it has three abilities. For a green, you can discard a land card, gain three life. One and a red, discard a land card, draw a card. And two and a black, discard a land card. It gains indestructible until the turn, and you tap it. This is not bad. niv -Mizzet Supreme. This is after he has soaked up all that energy from the War of the Spark. He is transcended after uh, the, the war, uh, the, the March of the Machines. This is a aftermath card. No, this is this might be a March of the Machines card. Yeah. For Wooberg, you get a five-five though with flying and hexproof from monocolored. Each instant sorcery card that in your graveyard that's exactly two colors has jumpstart, so you can discard a card and pay the cost. This is not bad. And then we get to the two-part. Uh, creature and land that makes an avatar so Aragoth Sanctum of Nature it's a land and it's the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature you can tap it for green and for two and two green you can tap it create a 2-2 two -two bear creature token and then mill three cards activate only as a sorcery and it melds with Titania Voice of Gaia for one and two green it's a 3-4 with the reach it's an elemental Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from play from anywhere, you gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are more than if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own Titania and Aragoth, exile them and meld them into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. And this is where the Avatar comes in because it's a star star. Vigilance reach trample with haste and its power toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. When it enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. It's actually pretty cool. So when it flips, you get all your lands back from the graveyard. For throwing your green, you can put four counters on a target land you control. It becomes a 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. Gandalf the White. For three and two white, it's a 4-5 with flash. You may cast legendary spells and artifact spells as though they had flash. It's actually pretty cool mono white artifact deck somebody build it i want to see it a legendary permanent or artifact entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger it triggers an additional time it's a man harmonicon gandalf 
Friend of the Shire for three and a blue. It's two four with flash. You may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. It's pretty cool, I guess. I actually like that one a little bit. Whenever it tempts you, if you chose a creature other than Gandalf, the Friend of the Shire as your ring bearer, draw a card. Saruman the White for four and a blue. It's a four four with ward two. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, amass orcs two. Saruman the Necromancer for three and two black. It's four four with menace. Avatar Horror. Whenever it attacks, exile target creature card from your graveyard. Create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that card, except it's a three three black wraith with menace. At the beginning of your next incept, exile that token unless Sauron is your ring bearer. Red aghast the brown for two and two green. It's a two five. Whenever him or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you look at the top X cards of your library where X is that creature's mana value. You may reveal a creature card that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control from among those cards and put it into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh, excuse me. I can see this going really good in a, uh, what is it? The Volo Guide to Monsters deck. As long as you don't have another wizard or avatar in the deck, I can see this going really good. Because then you just keep filtering through to find more cards to more creatures. The Balrog, Durin's Bane, for five, a black and a red. It's seven five. The spell costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this turn. So it's go good in a Corvold deck. It has haste and can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. So I'll throw Gandalf in front of it. Be pretty cool. When it dies, destroy target artifact or creature in opponent controls. Then it destroys the Gandalf. Gandalf the Gray for three, a blue and a red. So three, four. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, choose one that hasn't been chosen. You may tap or untap target permanent. Deal three to each opponent. Copy target instant sorcery you control. You may choose new targets for the copy or put Gandalf on top of its owner's library. Oh, you have to choose one. So if you play four spells, you have to put them on top. Saruman of many colors. I like his robe. Shit looks dope. For three, a white, a blue, and a black. It's a 5-4 with ward. Discard an enchantment instant or sorcery card. Which could be very hard if you're playing in an all-creature deck. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, each opponent mills two cards. Whenever one or more cards are milled this way, exile target enchantment, instant, or sorcerer card with equal or lesser value than that spell from an opponent's graveyard. Copy the exile card you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. So if you can protect him, you can cast your second spell after they've tried to pay the ward cost, and you can just get a copy of the thing that they discarded if it's a really good thing. That's pretty neat. I like that. That's very unique. Sauron the Dark Lord for three, a blue, a black, and a red. It's a 7-6, and he just goes without, you know, everybody knows this card because it has a sacrifice award ability to sacrifice a legendary artifact or a legendary creature. Legendary artifact. Yeah. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, a mass orcs one. Whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. And whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand if you do draw four. I have seen just some nasty stuff come out of a sorrow on deck, and it is ridiculous. Sharky, Tyrant of the Shire. For two, a blue and a black. It's a two four. Activated abilities of land your opponent's control can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. And it has all abilities of land your opponent's control except mana abilities. That's pretty decent, I guess. Mana of any type can be spent to activate Sharky's abilities. Well, it's, I can see some interesting builds coming up with this guy. Sauron, the Lidless Eye. Ooh, that's so country the way I said that. The Lidless Eye. Ooh, and look, he only has three fingers. For three, a black and a red, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever it enters the battlefield, gain control, target creature, and opponent controls until under turn. Untap it, it gains haste. For It has an ability for one, a black and a red. Creatures you 
you control get plus two plus on until on the turn each opponent loses two life so if you just have infinite mana you could just and just kill everybody Gandalf white rider for three in a white it's a three three with vigilance whenever you cast a spell creatures you control get plus one plus I want to on the turn that's a little nutty when it dies you may put it into its owner's library fifth from the top wow that is ridiculous I don't think I've ever seen a mono white spell slinger deck I think this would be pretty pretty dope if you put him in there though so you put him at the helm the balrog flame of Undoon. For three, a uh, red and a black. It's a 7-7 seven, seven with trample. Whenever an, a legendary creature in opponent controls dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. I am so confused. That is not even a good legendary creature effect. Unless you're like trying to just constantly have to cast him. I don't know. But there's a lot of legendary creatures. So, I mean, I don't even see this as a good commander. Or just a good card in general. Sauron, Lord of the Rings. For five, a blue, a black, and a red. It's a 9-9. Nine, nine. Whenever you cast the spell, a mass orcs five, mill five, and then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty pretty neat. Trample, whenever a commander, an opponent you control, an, op an opponent controls dies, the ring tempts you. Hmm. Cast the spell. No, you can't cast it. I was thinking of like Royal Gorgeous Dragon Lines, but no, this is way too far flown. Gandalf Westward Voyager for three, a green and a blue. It's a 5 5. Whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, each opponent reveals the top card of their library. If any of those cards shares a card type with the spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy, and each opponent draws a card. Otherwise, you just draw a card. Saruman the White Hand. For one blue, black, and a red, it's two five. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, a mass orcs X, where X is the spell's mana value. Goblins and orcs you control have ward two. This could actually be a better goblin deck commander because you're giving them protection. And orcs, I don't know how orcs would fare in a goblin deck, but you know you could do it if you put Sauron in the head. Of the goblin deck. And you find a way to make all of your creatures armies with like an arcane adaptation, and you throw this in the deck so they all get buffed. That'd be pretty cool. The Balrog of Moria for four, two black and a red. It's an 8 8 with the trample and haste. When it dies, you may exile it. When you do for each opponent, exile up to one target creature that player controls. That's pretty cool. Uh, cycling for three and a red. When you cycle it, create two treasure tokens. There wouldn't be a way to infinitely Ooh. loop that one either. But because commanders do die before you uh, change zones with it, you can just exile it. And then from the exile, you can send it back to the command zone. I think. I think that's how it would work. Radagast, Wizards of the Wilds, for two, a green and a blue. It's a 3-5 with Ward 1. Beasts and birds you control have Ward 1. That's still pretty cool. Whenever you cast a spell with many value 5 or greater, choose one. Create a 3-3 three, three beast creature token or create a 2-2 two, two bird creature token. That's pretty neat. And then we end up coming to our last one. Which is the obtruse, abstruse, archaic. The archaics in uh, Strixhaven were very strange. Because there were a few, only a few of them. And they were only, like, ever seen, like, at times, certain times. Like, when they wanted to be seen. But for four mana, it's a 3-4 with vigilance. And for one generic mana, you can tap it copy target activated or triggered ability you control from a colorless source you may choose new targets for the copy huh. it's actually pretty neat but that is going to be it for today guys I really appreciate everybody watching 
everybody that's that liked the videos that comments on the videos and especially all the, the my subscribers old and new I hope all you new people are enjoying the content that I put out and if you have any suggestions just let me know just send post it on a comment or you know just find a way to contact me through Twitter or X whatever it's called and just let me know but that is going to be it for today, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time in the graveyard.